Wait, 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 wait. Stop. <laughs>Fluffy or panda and me Tam loves tea. Do you know what I realized in the previous video? We didn't introduce ourselves Oops <laughs> Well, <laughs> well, if you guys don't know who we are by now, welcome to the show <laughs> today, today we are on a magical magical magical, magical realm. We are at Ronnebosch Common in the parking lot the We're gonna be talking about stories that make you go WT and obviously there are tons and tons and tons of stories that will make a person go WTF. We've just picked our favorites for this week. Whether it be internet stories, whether it be thoughts that we've had in our heads, whether it be experiences that we had, it'll always just be something that makes us go, Kheh. So, Tam Lab C, do you want to head us off? Should we talk about the Las Vegas shooting? I mean, it's already been covered. Extensively. Extensively. My thoughts on it are get your shit together, America. Get your shit together with your gun laws. It's just been so many mass shootings. Whether it be going to go see a Batman movie, whether it be just going to school every day. Just and going to church. Just going to church. And I commend the American people for still taking part, for kind of rallying up against that fear. And just being like, right. okay, there was a bombing while we had like one of the biggest marathons in the country. We're still going to go. We're not going to let this stop us. But at what point does that resilience just not... How many more shootings have to happen before people wake up and they go, hey, actually there might be a problem? It's gotten to the point and it's been at that point for a long time of like when we hear about another shooting in America, we're like, oh, okay. Like it's not horrifying anymore. It is still horrifying for me. It still breaks my heart. When they had the London attacks on the bridge. Yes, you know, some people were like, oh, look at these people running with their beers. And like, people were laughing. But it still breaks my heart every time something happens. And I just I can't comprehend it. I cannot comprehend why why you would do that to an, like to so many people. To complete strangers. Even if it's like your freaking kins, kinsman. Like your fellow American, for example. But I don't understand. I don't have a... Okay, I do have a slight malicious bone in my body. But... This whole but the thing is that it doesn't comprehend. No. Like, uh, to do something like that, to do that kind of planning and be like, yes, this is what I want to do, it's like. I don't, I don't understand it. Yeah. I don't, I don't un understand. What I also don't understand is how, after the first one, the very first one, way back when, why stuff, legislature and all of this, why that wasn't changed immediately. I think it's because the NRA, National Rifle Association, they have a lot of money and they fund the wrong kind of people. So it's all about money at the end of the day. You can't equate that to human life. You shouldn't, but people do. And uh, what kind of bothered me about the whole Las Vegas thing was like people were comparing shootings of being like, oh no, it's not as bad as this one because this many people died in this one and this many people died. So it's not that bad. I'm like That, that right there, that, that is the what the fuck story for this week. That is not it doesn't matter if two people died or four hundred people died. Too. You can't compare that. Like Sandy Hook is not any less tragic mm -hmm. than the Vegas one just because mm -hmm. less children were killed. A psychopath walked into a primary school and opened fire on children. It's all terrible and the fact that people are comparing And the comparison between like WTF. Hurricane Irma and the devastation that happened in, I think it was like Houston and like what's happening in Puerto Rico. It's been like, oh well it's not as bad as, it's like, it doesn't matter. People still need help. People mm -hmm. need your help. You know, people still don't have homes. They don't have power. They don't have access to fresh water and food. Like Devastation is devastation. So my first story mm -hmm. is all about Professor Tim Nooks. Oh. Because mm, we all know that he's a great source of fact. Information. For those of you who don't know, Tim Nooks is the guy behind the Real Meal Revolution and the Banting. Banting? Banting? Banting. Banting. I'm always going to get those two confused because of this man. The Banting diet and it's all high fat, low carb, blah, 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 blah. But recently, he has come out of the closet. Um, <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> no. He has gone on record to say that plant-based diets are a dangerous trend and it's these diets that are contributing towards climate change. He has said, and I quote, the only way... Oh, wait. It's fine. Please, finish your conversation. You done? He has... <laughs> And I quote said, the only way we will save the planet is by going back to eating meat. But isn't the meat industry contributing to like global warming? That's the whole, stuff? that's why people are like, the fuck? Is it literally like cow farts? <laughs> <laughs> cow farts are destroying the world, stop eating cows. He's come out and said all of this against the vegan and vegetarian diets because of this documentary, What the Health, that's come out on Netflix. There's been like an huge increase in conversions to veganism because of this documentary. This documentary cites animal farming and a meat-based diet for global warming as well as a rise in cancer. I worry that you can't continue like this much longer because the myth that livestock is driving environmental issues is driven by the foil, ugh, the fossil foil industry and they are very powerful. People like Bill Gates and Richard Branson because they're out against the world, are very powerful and more people are saying they are going to be eating plant-based diets because of them. But the move against meat-based diets is unfounded and irresponsible to promote. And then obviously the biggest thing is that people are like, oh, he's just saying like people should be eating meat and vegan and vegetarian is bad because he has been funded by meat, dairy and egg companies. And he's just like, no, that's not the case. He's never gotten any like funding from these people and all the money that he's made before he's donated. So he has no agendas. That's the word. So just to finish off. Noxy Babes says that there's never been a society that can survive on a completely vegetarian or vegan diet. We have to have some animal products. Vegan people survive because you can get some of the nutrition you need from supplements, which means it's not a complete diet. You are still not getting adequate protein. You can survive on a 100% animal diet, but you cannot survive on a 100% vegan diet. Leave us your comments. Leave us your thoughts on the story. My, my what the fluff was him saying that it's... Veg vegetarianism and veganism that is contributing that is the cause of climate change i think it's a combination of factors mm -hmm. that's causing climate change mm -hmm. but i think the danger in vegetarianism and particularly veganism is when people do not do their research Mm -hmm. into it because I know veganism can be particularly dangerous because people don't do their research into what good alternatives are so they just cut out all animal products but then some food groups are obviously lacking mm -hmm. so then people end up living off of like just potatoes and whatever so they're just like okay the idea of veganism cut out meat mm -hmm. or animal products that's what i've done but there are other supplements natural supplements that you can take like there are a lot of berries and like i mean they grind up chickpeas to be all kinds of things you know it's when people don't do their research properly into what a proper vegan diet is then they just kind of like cut it all out because i mean there are a lot of things that are, are sugar based that are vegan Mm -hmm. Veganism doesn't automatically mean more healthy. Mm. Uh, you have to do your research into how to do that properly. And a lot mm. of people end up malnourished, like he said. You know, you can end up but malnourished. But that's two different from that. That's two but different things. From though. what he's saying is, I don't think they're the cause of global warming. No. I mean, they're two different things. I'm talking about people not doing their research and following a diet that's mm -hmm. detrimental to them because they haven't looked into it properly he's saying that you know topsoil erosion is yeah. what's causing but stat statistics one word i will forever struggle with so yeah statistics have shown um that pescatarians have the smallest carbon footprint in comparison to omnivores because you don't get people who solely just eat meat and vegetarians vegans and pescatarians i do honestly think that everybody in their everyday life could be doing more for the environment but I think hating on vegans and vegetarians does not help anyone. It doesn't solve anything. No. You're just being an asshole. I think it's just become a point of trolling. Yeah. Now because it's, you do get people, shall we call them vehement mm. vegans? Mm. <laughs> the VVs. And then obviously as an internet sort of culture thing, as soon as somebody says what 
bothers them and what they want to stop that's mm. the only thing people are going to focus on mm-hmm. so if somebody is like don't eat meat it's bad for this and rah, 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 rah. like obviously everybody's going to take pictures of themselves with hamburgers and be like you know on your hair Linda DeFranco proved this point about the internet so the beautifully Swedish fish by asking people not to send him Swedish fish and they sent him bags Swedish and fish. bags of Swedish fish that is the internet for you but it's people in every day-to-day life that I have a problem with. I have people gotten ag- ag- aggressive with me about what it is that I put, like what it is that I eat and what it is that I don't eat. And how can I call myself a vegetarian? I don't. I call myself a semi-veggie. <laughs> That's my term for it. Because if I have the option, I will choose a vegetarian option, but I will not call myself a vegetarian. Maybe you could be a poltitarian because you eat poultry. Poltitarian, I like that because it also kind of sounds like poltergeist. Yeah. Poltitarian. Ooh, I eat poltergeists. Poltitarian. That's what I. That's what I survive on, guys. Okay. Do you have another story? I do. I have one that'll what the fluff your mind up. Because okay. It's so great. Uh, you may have heard some of them already. Okay. But I don't think we've done it on the show mm. in depth. I'm not sure, but I'm still going to do it anyway. Okay, what is it? Um, I'm excited. Disney conspiracies. Oh! So some of these you might know already, mm-hmm. and then there's a slightly longer one, which I was like, Poof. Okay. That makes so much sense, and it's wrecking me. I'm ready! Alright, so you may have heard this one. That <laughs> Boo from Monsters, Inc. is the witch from Brave. Yes. The you entire pixel, pixel? Pixar pixel. universe is connected. It all makes sense. Uh, Emily from Toy Story 2 is actually Andy's mom. Do you know who Emily was? Uh, Jesse's... Jesse's former owner. Owner, friend, yes. master. I'm not quite sure what the correct term. <laughs> no, because Jesse is obviously a toy from Woody's Roundup. Yes, from that era. She's and a collector's... Well, now she's a collector's item. So it says that that show is quite old because they're mm. rare. Mm. And they're worth a lot of money. If mm. you've watched Toy Story 2, you'll know this. So then it would kind of match up with Andy's mom's age. But you can't just pick a random woman of that age. She wasn't the only woman in the world of that age. I don't... It doesn't really make... Yeah, it says Emily is reliving her childhood via the Roundup gang. Because that's why... Maybe that's why Andy has Woody. Because like she would have seen a Woody doll. Okay. And bought it for him. Okay. Also, Emily's child room decor was 1960s Flower Power and Toy Story came out in 1995, which would make Emily in her 30s. That does seem like it could work. It just seems a bit... But it's very, like... Like, it's very, like it ties everything up in a nice little bow and it's cute, but, but I But it need... literally could be any woman of that age. Yeah, I need a little bit more. I need something, you know, like, does his mom look a little bit like Emily? Well, you never Is see there... Emily's face. Yeah, you? that's why... Not enough thousand. solid fact yeah. there to be yeah. like, yes. So that Emily makes me go WTF. Tarzan's Jane is descended from Princess Belle. What? Okay, so some of these facts are kind of like, yeah, okay, whatever. Because A, she kind of looks like Belle. Yeah, but that's just animation sort of. style. She has a thing for yellow and purple, which... Belle does too. That's not hereditary. But... I'm sorry, liking colours is not hereditary. But in the scene with Kirk, one of the um, gorillas, mm-hmm. that's part of... What's a group of gorillas called? A flock. A flock. A gaggle of gorillas. A pod. <laughs> a herd. A, a congress. Of <laughs> no, that's baboons. <laughs> but yes, in the scene with Turk and... When they're at the camp... You see the teapot. And they do the... Yeah. We're going to go watch that movie. Um, you, you see the tea sets mm-hmm. that looks like Mrs. Pot and then a cup with a chip in it that mm-hmm. looks like chip. But that's which, just an Easter egg. Which makes you think that it could be an heirloom that's been passed down through the generations. That it's not necessarily Mrs. Pot and Chip because as we know at the end of Beauty and the Beast, they... 
came back to life but they human again. were human again to be human again there was obviously other crockery and stuff that was present in the palace before they returned so that makes sense they must have been mm. modeled after something and then okay. they also say that might also explain why jane knows how to talk to wild guys animal husbandry <laughs> do you have any more i do have one i think maybe this could be the last one okay uh, we'll include the link for those I'll who have yet link, to uh, experience. It's literally like 20 of them. Uh, I just think it's funny. This one just makes me giggle. Okay. Is, okay, so it's a two-part of one, mm -hmm. which I'm sure you've heard, is Aladdin takes place in the far off future. Yes! And this is all based on what the genie says when he comes out of the lamp which is 10,000 years will give you such a crick in the neck. neck but then he makes a bunch of modern pop culture references impressions mm. of Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jack Nicholson mm -hmm. so unless the magic lamp has been sitting in front of a TV in the cave of wonders we must assume Aladdin takes place 10,000 years from now I don't entirely agree with 10,000 years from now okay because it could be 10,000 years before Aladdin's time. So it doesn't necessarily mean it's going in the future, but I suppose maybe when it was released. Okay, because he says 10,000 years. Yes. He's been sitting there for 10,000 yes. years. So they're assuming that because he says 10,000 years, mm -hmm. Aladdin is set in the future from where we are now. Or well, from when the movie was released. From that time. Yes. But he's talking about he's been in there for 10,000 10, years. So that's in the past. So that's 10,000 years behind from where it got released from. Does that make sense? I, I kind of get what you're trying to say. Like that's in the past. So the genie was more than likely out of the lamp to have experienced everything to then make all those references in our present. Yes. And then there might have been who knows however many years. Because obviously those references are very limited. Yeah, they are very to that so, specific time period. So to whatever point that those references don't make sense anymore. Because even references like classic Hollywood and stuff. And if you had to go back and watch that movie now, you would understand references that you didn't as a kid. So I get what you're saying in that there could be years in between when he was trapped in the lamp. Mm -hmm. And then for him to have been around for those references. And you see, I forgot about the pop culture things. Because I was just thinking it in terms of years. But the fact that he knows all these things. Mm -hmm. So. Hmm. But then my favorite part of this theory is that Aladdin never happened. It's all just made up by the salesman in the beginning of the movie to get you to buy a lamp. Oh, shit. <laughs> I love that. Oh. I think that's amazing. Yeah. What do you think? I'm, I'm a big fan of that theory that it's all just made Me up by too. the salesman in the beginning. To get you to buy the lamp. Boom! So that's it from me, Tam Loves Tea. And me, Lady Flavia Powder! If you want to find us on social media, it'll all be linked in the description below. Everything for What The Fluff and our own personal channels outside of what's the fluff. Guys, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and more importantly, hit, hit that, that bell. Tiny little hit bell, little guys. Bell. Ding, ding. Because uh, then you'll know every time that we upload an episode, which is hopefully every Monday. Once again, thank you so much. We'll be back next week. Bye. Right. Shall we go for a walk? Yeah. All right. We are on location at Ronnebosch Gardens. No. Ronnebosch Common. I saw the little flashing red dot and I thought somebody had a red balloon in the background and I was like, <gasps> Yes! <sighs> so as you can see, it's literally just a flat wasteland, in my opinion. Pretty much. Bunch of paws for people to walk through dogs. It's going to be good. <laughs>
don't know what this accent is. Don't judge me. <laughs> so tall I know, right? <laughs> like what a world <laughs> so different from up here speech speech <laughs> my fair people of this place I welcome you here with warmth and mild intoxication to my coronation <laughs> nobody asked for this nobody voted but I won <laughs> I voted and you lost <laughs> But I am the king! <laughs> Huzzah! <laughs> so yeah, as you can see, Tan's kingdom goes Land. on for miles! Vast and barren. <laughs>